What's going on, guys? <laughs> Welcome to part eight of Metal Gear Solid that found the campaign. And I've just been fooling around in my mother base. But it is now time to call uh, my helicopter so we can go to the next mission. Roger. Well, I was not expecting that. Usually it just comes. Why has it gone to cutscene? Well, that was good timing to start recording here, wasn't it? <laughs> Who the hell's that? The yellow! Weather well, surveillance indicates turbulence out there. Try not to get knocked out of the sky. Got it. Where does she think she's going? You want to head out with the boss? That'll okay. be the day. I don't see a problem with it, as long as she's with you. She's a crack shot, damn fine scout. Well suited for a clandestine op. Which is more than I can say for the others. There's nothing damn fine about this... thing. Here. Hey. Blades. Wait a minute, that thing costs a lot of money. <laughs> Look at us all taking charge of that. You can see each individual sure blade. In Depth perception. One in. This is ridiculous. She doesn't talk. How could you possibly stay in communication? Right. She's gonna start singing. I like working solo anyway. She's just gonna sneak in the plane. Why's Miller got to ruin everything for him, man? Miller! No, I guess not. She's standing right there. There's no way she can get on there. Alright, go listen to some tapes. Boss, Clyde still hasn't made any moves. It's got me thinking. What? If you took her on a mission, she might break her silence. You want to let her out? Sure. Make her no different to the others. Everyone you pick up works for themselves, right? But her... I say work with her. See what happens. I wouldn't ask this of anyone but you. On missions, I'll make sure we have someone observing from a distance, and she won't I don't be allowed trust access us to all of the base. It's for us not up to something. Well, sometimes it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. The best part is, hiding is her specialty. If no one sees her leave the base, the staff will be yeah. none the wiser. And if she gets away... If that happens... You'll have to take care of her. But I have faith in you, boss. I think Quiet sees something in you. It's a big risk. But it's for the good of all of us. And besides, you can't deny her talent. Her unique skills and abilities would give you a hell of an edge out there. 
I'll think it over. Alright, what else is that? How long are we gonna keep that woman here? You mean quiet? My personal feelings aside, she's putting everybody on edge. You should hear the stories. I got sick from just standing guard at her cell. I won't stand on the same platform as that witch. She hit me for no reason. What is this, a private army or a kindergarten? <laughs> the thing is, they're all serious. They're faced with something they don't understand, and a kind of mass hysteria has broken out. I've gotten wind of countless plots to take her out. There are no grounds for this suspicion whatsoever. Put yourself in her shoes, assuming they see her as a prisoner here. No, even more so, if they do, she deserves to be treated humanely. I always thought our men were a bit more noble-minded, but... Look, I understand this is a stressful line of work, but to make her the scapegoat... You've got it wrong. Quiet? She's with Cypher. We have men that lost their buddies to her organization. But you could say that about more than just her. Plenty of the men used to fight for another side. But they've all put that aside to work for the boss. Cypher is different. And if you ask me, the boss is the biggest problem. Uh -huh. Why is he protecting her? Some of the guys are starting to suspect him of... I don't agree with keeping her here either. So what's your move? Throw her out? Kill her? <sighs> She's our ticket to Cypher. And her physical abilities are outstanding. We could use someone like her. Don't make me sick. Her marksmanship, speed, stealth capabilities for a start. Then, there are the other things we've learned. Quiet appears to be able to use both eyes as master eyes simultaneously. That lets her track targets of different focal lengths at once. While looking through the scope with one eye, she can look for new targets with the other. That's why she doesn't need a spotter. It's a bit she weird, isn't it? <laughs> alone, no matter the circumstances. See, I told you she's a freak. No one would be able to control her. No, there's one person who could. Hey, you trying to get the boss killed? Well, why don't we talk to him? Hmm? See if he's willing to take her along. I don't like this. It's his decision to make. The two of them might even make a good team. <sighs> Interesting. So much conflict. So much conflict of interest. Let's see. What's Huey? What's the stuff about Huey? Sahelanthropus. You call that thing Sahelanthropus. Where does the name come from? Well, several years ago, an excavation team discovered a hominid skull in the Sahel region. Central Africa. The Southern Sahara. Cypher gave the specimen the name Sahelanthropus. Man of Sahel. And then they covered the whole thing up. Why? They probably wanted to monopolize information about human evolution to have a head start in their genetic research. At least, until they had an idea of what they'd found. It was that big of a discovery, huh? Sahelanthropus was a gracile hominid, estimated to have lived about seven million years ago. What's significant about it is how its skulls, forum, and magnum faces down. In other words, its spinal column supported its head from underneath. It stood upright. Right. Which would mean Sahelanthropus walked upright three million years before Australopithecus, making it the world's oldest human species. Walking upright. I get it. Hence the name Sahelanthropus for your machine. Walking upright was the decisive difference between our ancestors and other anthropoids. Our brains could get heavier once they were supported by the spinal column. That led to the use of tools and the development of complex communication through language. Only man is capable of this. My creation will be the progenitor of all bipedal weapon platforms. And you did this for Cypher? No, not at all. Sahelanthropus is the best proof that I never betrayed you guys. What do you mean? The reconstructed Sahelanthropus skull looked exactly like the skull we used as our logo nine years ago in the Caribbean. An army without a nation. Outside the world order. The design was based on Pangaea, 
developed a supercontinent that existed 250 million years ago, right? Yeah. When the world was a single landmass, that concept's at the source of our strength. I felt the same way about Sahelanthropus. Sure, I was forced to build it under their orders, but I always wanted to put its technology back in our hands someday. That's the reason I incorporated the old insignia into Sahelanthropus's name. Don't you see? That's how much I was thinking about you guys. <laughs> oh, I see, all right. I see someone desperate to cover his ass. <laughs> you can say whatever you want after the fact. But that skull also symbolizes somebody else. Skull face. Well, just killed his... Snake! You finally came. It just... Don't record this, okay? I'm not recording anything. What's this about? What I'm about to say stays between you and me. It's about the weapon to surpass Metal Gear. Oh shit. Do you know a researcher by the name of Clark? Oh shit. He works in the biotech industry. Real advanced stuff. His area is bioengineering. He? But lately, he's also gotten into genetic research. Never heard of him. Well then, what do you know about cloning? I think I've heard enough. Hold on, this is important. Cloning lets you create a genetic copy of an organism. You take the nucleus of one of its cells, and you swap it with the nucleus of an unfertilized egg from another member of the same species. They started out working with plants, but since then they've had success with other organisms, including mammals. It's a hot area for a lot of places right now, Corporations, universities, research groups. There's no shortage of scientists out to get famous and patent their work, with morality taking a back seat. Isn't that a little outside your field? It's got nothing to do with my research. But I thought it might be of interest to you. Cloning, and Dr. Clark, I mean. Go on. Now, this is really highly classified stuff. But I've heard that an American biotech company has successfully cloned a human being. What's more, it happened over 10 years ago. Oh, shit. And the researcher behind it was Dr. Clark. You've really never heard of him? I don't meet many doctors. This Dr. Clark is a complete ghost, even to others in his field. His age, where he comes from, that might not be his real name. And I can't even say for sure he's a he. <laughs> Clark's employer, He's a he. <laughs> its company motto is Embracing Your Hopes, Preserving Talent. What does this have to do with me? Cypher. Dr. Clark works for ATGC, and they have connections to DARPA. Cypher couldn't function without the communications network DARPA's built. Meaning, Cypher has to be a part of the Pentagon. Or at least, the two are joined at the hip. DARPA is a driving force behind human cloning. It's a pretty high priority project for them. And this Dr. Clark? Some say he's a pivotal player in Cypher. But that's not all. Every cell nucleus in an organism contains the genetic information for that organism. Think of it as a blueprint for life. Clark appears to be working on how to decode this information and rearrange it at will. If you could do that, it would mean being able to custom design human beings for specific purposes. Can you believe that? Suppose for a moment that this is all fact. A man of your talents, if your genetic information died with you, that would be a terrible loss for mankind. But what if mankind could preserve you for future generations by cloning you? All right, enough. I get the idea. Look, I know it's inductive reasoning, but this weapon to surpass Metal Gear they're developing in Africa, I believe it's something that uses this new technology. <sighs> Speaking as a fellow scientist, it chills me to the bone. That's rich coming from you. If genes serve as our blueprint, then I wonder if they include an impulse that drives us to tweak the design. Can you imagine that? Genes encoded with information that wants its children to decode it. Is life itself putting the direction of our next evolution in the hands of scientists? I guess it would take some real arrogance to believe that. And yet, 
It could be what Cypher's after. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. But that was an interesting story. It'd make a good movie. You have to believe me. Where'd you hear all this anyway? Where? I just overheard it in bits and pieces while I was forced to do that research for them. Oh, right. Shit. Wait a minute. Look, I want to help you. I want to be of service here. I'm risking my life with this. Is that so? Maybe it's time we brought someone else into the conversation. No, not him. Not Ocelot. You can't do this. <laughs> wow. So there you go, Dr. Clark. Because originally, Dr. Clark was a he. Naomi Campbell used to talk about him in Metal Gear Solid 1, I believe. To talk about the cloning process of, of uh, Solid Snake. As they said, Dr. Clark was behind it all. And Dr. Clark was involved with making, uh, turning Grey Fox into the cybernetic ninja. Into the, oh man. But obviously, we all know Dr. Clark is actually a she. Oslo already told Big Boss about Dr. Clark being a she. Paramedic. So, what the hell is going on? I guess Snake doesn't want to tell Huey anything. Snake already knows about this now in Font Terrible. Snake knows about all this shit. So, I don't know what's going on here. Is there any more tapes? Snake's playing dumb, isn't he? He's always playing dumb. I can't wait till when he stops playing dumb. Alright guys, I'm going to start the next mission in the next video. That'll be part 29. This was just another tape session. And that cutscene of quiet. So, I'll see you in part 29. Peace.